If you're still using controllers, let me tell you that there is a better way to build your .NET REST APIs, which is simpler, more lightweight, and much more focused. In this video, I'm going to show you how to move from traditional controllers into my new favorite way of building .NET REST APIs, which is known as minimal APIs. Let's dive in. So here we have a fairly standard .NET REST API, which is currently built using controllers. So as you can see, we do have our games controller over here, and it's only meant to manage a small list of games. And so as you can see, it does have uh, the standard methods to go ahead and get all of the games, and then to retrieve one specific game uh, by ID, and then a method to create a game via a post, and then a method to update a game via a put verb, and then finally our method to delete a game. And as you can see, this is all using a standard uh, repository implementation to actually store those games uh, in memory in this case. And then this is what we want to go ahead and move into the minimal APIs approach. And so the first thing that we want to do in order to move to minimal APIs is actually go back into our program.cs file over here. And this is where we want to start defining those endpoints. So you don't have to specify a brand new class uh, for minimal APIs, uh, although you may end up uh, refactoring your code into an actual class uh, just to group them together, uh, but you don't have to do it, right? So what you want to do here is, let me scroll down a little bit over here, and let's add a line just after a uh, map controllers. So we can start by defining our get a uh, all endpoint. So to do that, let's do just app that map get, right? So this defines uh, a get type of, of endpoint. And then the first thing to specify here is what we know the pattern. Uh, the pattern is going to be that path that's going to be followed uh, by the client in order to reach this specific, uh, this specific endpoint. So in this case, as you have seen, uh, everything here as, as meant by the controller uh, is, is going to be into the games path, right? So in here, the pattern, the follow is the name of the controller, in the, the controller is named games, and that's why in games.http, we can reach everything by using games, right? Slash games. So that same path is the one that we're going to be using for our minimal API. So let's go down here and we're going to be using that uh, games uh, path over there. And then the next thing is going to be the request delegate. So this is the, the place where we define the actual action to execute when somebody hits that specific endpoint. So to define the delegate, all you have to do is just to define it as a very standard delegate, actually, like that, right? And now we have a place to actually execute the action. Now, before running the, the actual code here, we're going to be needing one thing, which is going to be the repository, the repository instance. So let's go ahead and do dependency injection, not in a constructor, but in this case, in this delegate directly. So it's going to be an I games repository, like that. And then for this repository, we're going to name it just as repository. And now we are pretty much ready to execute the code. That code is going to be the same thing as in the controller. So let's go down into our games controller and let's just copy that line of code that we have over here. Right? So let's copy that into our program CS like this. And then one thing we're going to need is to introduce one more namespace, hello API entities. So we can actually use this method, which all it's going to do is transform the entity into a DTO that we can then return back into the client. Right? And by doing this, we have pretty much uh, implemented our uh, get action. As you can see, uh, it is no more than just, uh, I guess, four lines of code, right? There's no need to define a, a class. There is no need for a constructor and there is no need even for an attribute. It's all defined right here. And this is one of the things that I really like about minimal APIs because it is very focused, very specific, right? So we are defining four lines of code specifically for the get action. So it's a very nice way to get started with minimal APIs. And so that is our first action. So let's move forward with the next one, which is going to be the one to retrieve a game by ID. And let me actually collapse this for a second like that. So to define this action, it's going to be very similar to the previous one. So let's go ahead and do app that map get. And just like before, it's going to start with the games uh, prefix. Uh, but in this case, we do need to specify what is going to be the, the ID right as part of the path as a, as a correct REST implementation. So it's going to be ID. And then we also need to specify again that request delegate. So let's go ahead and define that delegate over here, right? Just like that. And then we do need two things here. So first we need our iGames repository, right? Repository. Uh, in this case, we're also going to be needing that specific ID for the game to retrieve. So it's going to be int ID, like that. And then we're ready to go ahead and implement this endpoint, just like that. So let's go back into controller and let's copy these few lines over here. Let's copy that. And as you can see, it's a very standard implementation that all it does is says, okay, let's go ahead and retrieve the game. And if we are not able to find it, it means that, I mean, it's not found. It's not there in our repository. Now, in this case, we cannot do just not found. We have to do results that not found. That's a type to return for minimal APIs. And then for the other case where we're actually able to find the, uh, the object, what we want to do is just say results that okay. 
And in that, okay, we're going to be passing in uh, that DTO that we're going to return back into the client. There are other types to, to, uh, to use here, right? But we're not going to be covering that in this video. Now, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much your get by ID implementation. As you can see, very straightforward, same code, uh, but with less ceremony, I guess. Now, one thing that may be bothering you at this point is that we are uh, going to start writing too much code in our product.cs class, which it should, should really just meant for uh, bootstrapping the application, right? Not for writing all of that, that code. Uh, so in that case, uh, we can start doing a couple of things. So the first thing is that we can uh, centralize how we define uh, this prefix for our endpoints. And we can do that by using a feature that is known as route groups. So let me show you that. Let me scroll down here. And what we can do now is just say the following. Bar group is going to be app that map group, right? And in that map group, you can define what's going to be the prefix for all of the endpoints in that group. So in this case, we know that the prefix that we've been using is game. So I'm just going to be copying this over there. And now we have defined a group where we can add all of the endpoints. So instead of using the app object directly, we're going to be copying group and using it right here and right here, right? So both of them are going to start there and therefore we don't need to specify a prefix anymore. We can remove this and just define our endpoints like this. By the way, that group is actually very powerful and you can attach a lot of uh, other things uh, that, that you want to be common for all of the endpoints. So that's the first thing. And then the other thing is that perhaps, uh, like I said, we don't want to have so much code in problem.cs. So what we can do is just move all of this into kind of an extension method in another place uh, so that we can keep our problem.cs uh, very clean. So let's go ahead and do that. And what I'm going to do is just create a brand new folder at the root, a uh, new folder. Let's, let's call this just endpoints, right? And here we're going to be creating a brand new, uh, new class. Let's call this one games endpoints. All right, and this is going to be a static class, static class. Let's clean up things a little bit over here. All right, and so in this method, in this class, we're going to be defining just one method, which is a method to map all of our routes. So this is going to be public static, and then we're going to be returning the actual group instance back into the color. So it's going to be route group builder, and then let's call this one map games, and then we're going to be extending our I endpoint route builder, and let's call this one routes. All right, so that's our method over there. And then really all we have to do there is just move this code that we have over here. Let's, let's copy this and then paste it over there like that. Let me collapse this so we can see better. Okay, and then we have to do a few things. So instead of using app, we're going to be using routes over here. And then we have to import the namespace for our repository like that. All right, we also need a namespace for us DTO. And then finally, we're going to be returning our group like this. Okay, and just by doing that, now we have a central place to just lay out all of our endpoints for the minimal API. And so with that in place, we can go back into brown.cs. And what we can do instead of writing all this code over here, we can just say now app that map games, right? Like this. And then of course we need an space there, like that. Okay, and now our uh, our Prom CS is uh, very, very clean, as you can see. So we can focus our development now in games endpoint over here. So now we have endpoints for the get actions. Let's also do the the, oh, uh, the post, right? So let's go back and let's actually, yeah, let's actually go down here and we're going to be defining a brand new method in our group, which is going to be, so a group that in this case is going to be map post, right? And so again, uh, we're going to define the route. It's just going to start with uh, our uh, slash because we have the group that defines the prefix. And then again, we want to specify what's going to be our delegate, right? So let's go ahead and add our delegate over here. All right. And then two things we're going to need here. First, as, as usual, we are going to need our iGames repository instance right there. And then the other thing is going to be the DTO that represents the payload that the client is going to send us here. So in this case, that DTO is going to be create game DTO and then its name is one game game DTO right we're going to need one in space over here it's going to be hello that API that DTOs like that and then we're ready to go ahead and implement our post action over there so for the actual logic of this post action let's as usual let's go back into games controller over there and let's see what we had before so let's go down here uh, for post this is logic so let's go ahead and copy this these lines of code into games endpoints over here right there and then let's see what we have to change, right? So it's very standard. So we go ahead and create an entity out of the DTO, right? And we say, okay, repository, go ahead and do the create. Uh, but in this case, we cannot use just a create add action over here. We have to use uh, instead of that create add route. That's the right method to use. And then as usual, we want to specify, and of course, yeah, it's going to be results that created route. 
And then in this case, we cannot just say name of get because the, uh, such a get method doesn't exist, right? So in the case of the controller, we could say name of get because get is the method defined over here, right? Is, is that name. Uh, but in this case, we cannot do that. So what we want to do instead is just add uh, a name for our get by ID um, endpoint, and then we can refer that name over here. So to do that, let's go down uh, over here into a get by ID. And what we're going to do is just say here with name, and then we can just attach any, any name here. Let's say get by ID. Okay, so that's going to be our get by ID endpoint. And by doing that, we can now copy that name and just use it down here into this one over there, right? So now this is uh, this is going to create a location header using the route of the get by ID endpoint, right? And the rest is pretty standard as you can see. And now, now that we have the post implementation, let's go ahead and implement our put. So let's go down here and let's go ahead and implement group dot map put. And then in this case, uh, once again, we're going to start with slash and then we're going to be receiving the, uh, the ID like that. Uh, ID. And then again, we're going to be needing a, a delegate here. So let's define that delegate like this. And then let's go ahead and define, uh, actually, let's fix this like that. All right. And then for the put, well, again, we're going to be needing our repository, right? So iGames repository. And in this case, we're going to be needing the DTO for the updates, right? So in that case, that's going to be a update game DTO. And then let's call this one game DTO. And then one more thing they're going to need here is the actual ID of the game to update. So it's going to be int ID. All right. So that's going to be for our put. And let's scroll down this so we can see better there. And then let's go back in the controller. Let's see what kind of implementation we had before. It's going to be this one here. Let's copy that into games endpoints over here. There. And again, it's a very standard stuff. First, we'll try to retrieve the game. If we cannot find it, we're going to do not found. So it's going to be results dot not found. And then uh, here we have, we'll be using updated game DTO. So let's actually rename game DTO as updated game DTO, like that. And then finally, we're going to be returning no content. So it's going to be results that no content, like that. And that's pretty much our put implementation. All right. So let's move forward with the next one, which is going to be our delete. So group dot map delete, right? And then delete is, a, is again, is a very, very simple implementation. It's going to be uh, for our path. It's going to be just ID, slash ID. And then again, we're going to need uh, our delegate over here. So let's go ahead and define that over there. Here's our delegate. And then here we're going to be needing, again, our iGames repository. And then we're also going to be needing the ID, right? So int ID, like this. And then uh, for the actual uh, implementation, let's go back into games controllers. And then let's see what, what we implemented for delete. It's going to be these few lines over there. Let's paste that over here. And now we have our delete implementation, which again is just tries to find the game. If it cannot find it, it's going to get, I mean, if it is, if it is able to find it, it will go ahead and delete it. Uh, but if it cannot find it, it doesn't really matter because for delete, what we want to make sure is that we always uh, do the same thing. It's kind of idempotent, right? Uh, so it doesn't matter if the resource exists or not. We just go ahead and delete it if we find it and otherwise we just say yeah we, we are done with the action the, with the request so it's going to be here results that no content like this that is pretty much the end of this set of endpoints uh, for minimal apis right? so that's, that's how you define them and then um, one more thing to do here is go back into ram cs right and we have to do just a couple of changes here so remember that in the case of controllers we are defining this line here to add all of the controllers that are found uh, in the uh, in the project or in the assembly but we are not not going to be using those anymore so i'm going to just remove that line right and we also don't need this other line which just maps all of the controllers into the proper routes right uh, but we're not going to be using controllers so we're going to remove that line over there and with that we're pretty much ready to try out our uh, our minimal api so let's go down into our terminal and let's go ahead and do dotnet run and let's see if things are working as expected just as before so let's go into our games.http file over here and let's collapse things a little bit let's see what happens if we try to go ahead and now use our games input over here so send request so as expected it is working just fine so we are able to retrieve our five games as you can see we have our five games over there we can retrieve game let's say game number three yeah fifa 23 is right there we are able to retrieve it and then uh, let's see if we can create our minecraft game so minecraft game via a post action send request yes and we are even getting the location header right there 
right? Which in fact I'm going to be using uh, to retrieve game number six, which is going to be a Minecraft game. Let's see if there it is there. So it has been created successfully. And then uh, can we update game number one? So let's send a request for a put returns the content, but now our game number one should be Street Fighter 2 Turbo. So let's see. Uh, in fact, uh, yeah, we have Street Fighter 2 Turbo and the price has also been updated. So update is working just fine. And lastly, let's see if we can delete game number five. So send request. Okay, number five. Let's try to retrieve game number five now. And then it is not there. So it's not found. So the, the exact same behavior we had before with controllers, now we have with our minimal API. So that's working great. Um, but there's one more thing here, which is going to be the case of the validation, the input validation. And this is one that will not come uh, and just work by default in minimal APIs, because let me show you what happens. So if we just remove the, the name from this, uh, from this game here for the post action, and I try to do a send request, what we're going to find is that the game is actually created, right? So you can see that the status code here was created and the game was created, but kind of with, with a null name, which is not, not great, right? So that didn't work by default. Uh, but it, that's actually very easy to, to handle by adding just an open source and Nougat package. So let me show you this. Uh, let's go ahead and down into our terminal. Uh, what you want to do is just introduce a brand new Nougat package. It's going to be .NET add package, and the package is named minimal API start extensions, right? So if you just add that, that's going to go ahead and bring us new functionality that takes advantage of a feature called uh, endpoint filters to be able to filter the data that comes into any of our endpoints. So how do we take advantage of that package? Just go back into games endpoints over here. And what you want to do is in the definition of your group right here, you can just add one more line that's going to say with parameter validation. By doing that, you now have input validation for all of the endpoints defined in that one group, right? Just with that one line. So if we now try again and run our API, just like that. Let's go back to gates.http and collapse this. And then if we try to execute this post once again with no name, send request. And as you can see, we now get our expected uh, bad request over here. And it clearly says that the name field is required, right? Because validation has been enabled via this feature, like I said, is, is called endpoint filters. And so, yeah, that, now that we are pretty much done with this, let me start my, ser start my server. Let's see how this, this ends up being. So now we have all of our endpoints pretty much well-defined in this file over here, and we don't need our games controller anymore. So we can go ahead and delete controllers like that. Let's go ahead and delete this. And now we have completely moved into the new minimal APIs approach, which as you can, as you can see, it is very straightforward, very simple to write. And it is, like I said, it is very, very focused, right? So you clearly say what you want to do for each of the endpoints, as opposed to how to rely on kind of a convention, which is what, what was the previous uh, controllers approach. So consider this new approach for your next .NET REST API. And if you found this useful, please check out my next video where I cover another topic that is also essential for professional .NET developers. And as usual, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.